Welcome back to the channel. It's been quite a while since we've done a Yu-Gi-Oh! video, so I want to do one today. And honestly, I'm kind of proud about this one because I think I did it. I think I figured out Cyberdux. Obviously, they got a ton of new support with their structure deck coming out. And while the support on paper looks pretty mediocre... Okay, let's be real, it is pretty mediocre. Um, I was working with tweaking builds, trying to see if I can get something to be at least somewhat viable, something that I can coherently works together. And I think I did it. <laughs> um, this is the build we're rocking with right now. Uh, and I had a surprising win rate with it. It works really well. The deck has a ridiculous amount of search power. Everything is searchable. No matter, basically every card in the deck is searchable. And the deck flows together really well and can play through multiple interruptions because of how much search power it has. So I've got a few games here that I want to show you guys. Give you some post commentary with it. And shit, let's jump in. Let's check it out. If you guys enjoy the video, please drop a like. Helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're new. I need to start doing some more Yu-Gi-Oh videos. But I'm hyped to show you guys this. So let's jump in. This is on Dueling Nexus, by the way. Alright, so this is our opening hand. It's actually kind of bunk because we opened up with a brick. But, again, we have two searches in our hand, a Cyber Dragon is probably the deadest card in our hand besides the Red Eyes. And that trap card, do not sleep on that new trap card. So I started out by searching a Cyber Dragon so I have my normal summon. Even though I didn't need to search that, I actually could have grabbed uh, Chimera, but there was no reason for me to grab Chimera yet. Now I search Claw, because this is the, this is one of the ideal setups that you want to try and get with on your first turn. Claw searches Inferno. And then you normal summon one of the Cyber Darks, attach it with an equipped uh, monster from the grave, and now it's unaffected by... Can't be targeted or destroyed. Sorry. Not, not unaffected. And then that trap card face down means if I need to boost his attack points, I can attach the other monster from the graveyard, bump him up to 34. Or I can get rid of the monster attached to him to pop a guard. So it can be used as a form of disruption. He used Metal Foes Fusion, I let it go. And this monster, I didn't know what it would what it did, but basically he can uh, kind of pull a relinquish and absorb my monster. And he gains its attack and defense as its defense. tries to set a scale. I don't really know much about Metal Foes, but I just know how Pendulums work, so I immediately went and, bought and broke the scales. The only downside to, to breaking the scales is that now um, Kiel can be affected by his card. His monster has to target a monster to attach it. Claws, claws effect when sent to the graveyard lets us add back a cyber dark in the grave. So we grab back claws so that way we can actually get another monster search. Oh. The Cybernetic Horizon is a neg one, technically. But there's a reason it's a neg one. Uh, again, another card I super slept on. This is one of the reasons I like Cyber Dark Inferno besides just its protection effect is you can bounce back a monster and then resummon it, letting you reattach, get your protection back on. Now, what happened here, I'm gonna pause it. I tried to bounce back Cyber Dark Keel. He goes to use his monster effect to, to attach the keel. I tried to use my trap card to reattach a monster to it, hoping that that would make it so it couldn't be targeted again. But it was already targeted, so that was a misplay on my on my part. Now, this is why Cybernetic Horizon is stupid. So we already have a light monster in our hand, which is a Cyber Dragon. So we just gotta get rid of that one. 
Now you have to send a dark monster, so we're sending Chimera. Chimera is probably the best thing to send with Horizon, because now you can send another card. Now we get to search any monster in our deck. And <laughs> we can even search Cyber Dragon Core, which is what we did. And now we can start setting up our graveyard to try and make Cyber Dark and Dragon. <laughs> And now with Chimera, we can send another monster, so we send Cyberdark Edge, just in case we need to make Cyberdark Dragon. Core is fantastic in this deck. fan freaking tastic Because it, all the Cyberdark cards, all the, the new Cyberdark cards obviously have Cyberdark in the name. So they have Cyber in the name, so you can search all of their new spell and drop cards. It's... Silly, the amount of synergy he has. Literally, the only cyber dark, the only cyber dragon cards I play in here are three core, three cyber dragons, purely for cybernetic horizon, and a rub system because core being a one card dragoon is still disgustingly good. Like we have the two worst cards in our deck in our hand, and we can still make plays. He attempts to make the same monster he made. This is where I got a little confused about what he was doing. <laughs> because I use... The reason I like Cyberdark World, not only is it a search on place, but it gives you an extra normal summon for your Cyberdarks, which helps you get your monsters out faster, which was a big problem Cyberdarks had. So even though I already normal summon the core to get a search, I can now summon Horn to get another monster out. I just got confused as why he didn't use his effects when I summoned the horn. Watch. He could have attached the horn, which would have pretty much ended my turn. But see, horns on someone effect attaches the monster, and now he can't touch. He can't touch horn. Effect. He attaches the core because that's all he can do. Who knew piercing would actually be good in this situation? We use Claw's effect to send a dragon to the grave, and now we have our materials for Cyber Dark and Dragon in the grave. to remake his scales I immediately break him again so he can't pencil summon I use Cyberdark Claw to add back Cyberdark Claw so I can search again oh <laughs> I lied so this was a risky move right here adding back Cyberdark Chimera but my deck is flooded with spells and traps so I was going for the big finish here hoping that I would draw into a spell or trap and we did. We drew into another Cyber Dark World. So we summon Chimera, ditch Cyber Dark World, search Power Bond. We can now Power Bond using our field and graveyard. So we had to be Inferno, bouncing back Horn, resummoning Horn. So we can get another beater out. But I didn't necessarily need to do this right now. unaffected and it can attach a monster from either player's graveyard every turn and when it does it gets that many attacks i could have actually attached a monster and then used my trap card to attach another monster he would have been eleven thousand able to attack toys <laughs> i actually took his red eyes black dragon as a uh kind of as a uh what's the word i'm looking for sense of irony since I've, I've had red eyes in my hand the entire duel but that was the first duel, super fun. As you guys see, the search power is ridiculous. And now game two, we went first in this game and the game was over super fast. But I just wanted to show you, I left this one in here just cause I wanted to show you guys just one silly way 
this deck can interact with other decks. So, opening up Core and uh, Cyber Dark World is just disgustingly good. I've said that so many times, but I could have went for the whole usual setup, but I decided to go with a Dragoon first turn because Cyberdarks have something a little funny going for them. So we do the, we do this whole one card combo to get out Dragoon. Dragoon is still a ridiculously good card. Also, the reason I went for Dragoon is because we have Chimera in hand. Chimera is the perfect card to discard because, again, at least you send another monster to the graveyard. So it's definitely really good discard fodder. Now we activate Cyber Dark World. And in this case, we actually search Cyber Dark Claw, which Claw is probably like one of the best cards in the deck now because there's so many targets for it to search. We grab Inferno. Now we use now we use world to get an extra normal summon. Yeah, that's the funny thing. Predator Plant Vert Anaconda says that you can't special summon after you use its effect. Doesn't say anything about normal summoning. And because this deck focuses on normal summoning, we can still normal summon another Cyber Dark after we use Predator Plant Vert Anaconda. So yeah, I thought that was actually a pretty interesting interaction. So now we attach the claw. And we pass the turn. And now we have two monsters on the field that can't be targeted or destroyed and an Omni Negate. Our opponent was playing some kind of Synchron deck. I guess that's a new thing. I've, I've actually seen it quite a few times on Nexus. We have no reason to stop any of his searches. Now, the Junk Synchron is where we decide to negate. Because he only has two tuners on the board, and now he only has one tuner. So unless he has another way to summon a monster, he can't make a Synchro. Send Horn, because that's the only one we don't have we don't have a copy of in our hand or in the graveyard, and our opponent immediately surrenders. It just, I, like I said, I know that game was super fast, but I really wanted to show off that board and the, what I was able to do with it. And that interesting interaction with being able to still summon after using Anaconda. Alright, last game. This one was also very fun. And again, it showed how the deck could play through interruptions. Now this oh, this is also the first game we'll move in second. We'll play against Dragonities. We have an infinite impermanence, which is a great card to start off with. And then the rest of our hand is actually pretty solid. You try to use this to attach the monster. This is where we actually pop the impermanence, basically ending his turn. So use Cyber Dark World to search Cyber Dark Claw. And I wanted to be a little uh, creative here. So when we use Claw, instead of getting World and just getting our usual protection, we actually grab Cyber Dark Horizon to set up. But look at what we're able to do here. So we activate Horizon. We're gonna ditch the Claw in our hand and a regular Cyber Dragon from the deck. Now we can search Core and send a fusion material to the grave. So we send a cyber and dragon. And now since we send chimera, we get to send something else. So we're gonna send an edge because we don't have an edge in hand or in the graveyard. Now we summon core, core gets us inferno, and we play inferno, and then we use cyber dark world's second effect to get an extra normal summon, we summon out a cyber dark. Now we can't do it, we can't do any linking away right now because we can only summon machines because of cybernetic horizon. But if I wanted to, I could have used the rev system to turn to summon the cyber dragon that we sent to the graveyard. Oh, sorry. Because of the cyber dragon that we sent to the graveyard, we could have brought it back and actually made a seeger out of the cyber dragon and the core. 
that was one play that, that I realized I could have done. And we could have actually made the keel even bigger because he would have he could have jumped up to 45 because he has over 21. Um, but we end up just swinging into the missile tank and we end up sending Cyberdark Dragon to the grave. So now we have a bulk materials for Cyberdark and Dragon. Heals effect to deal 300. <laughs> that actually is part of the reason we won. Kind of. Drives a dark hole. Obviously, Keel can't be destroyed because of Inferno. Now, this is where I was a little upset because if I had made the Seeger. We could have stopped part of this play. I actually never seen this car before, so that was cool. But yeah, he goes, he kind of goes off. Three summons that out. Then he links instead of making another uh, synchro. That was a little surprising. Uses that, searches Pike, whatever it's called. I just realized this guy was rocking what, a 50 card deck? That was more than that. Now he gets to reattach a monster from the grave, he reattaches the, the tuner. No, from the deck, I'm sorry. Now he gains a power boost and he can attack multiple times. So now I use Claw, send a five-headed dragon. You always want to send five-headed dragon. I mean, if you have to summon a Cyber Dark Dragon, that's just, or Cyber Darkness Dragon, giving him an extra 5,000 power is just silly. Swings again, we take the 25, and then we take his other monsters, 1,200. And then he ends his turn. Now, because of our claw, we added, we added back Chimera, and now we go off with Chimera. Discard. We discard the rev system that we didn't play last turn. <laughs> this, this part, this part pissed me the fuck off. Excuse my language. He, he's able to send one of his attached equipment cards to the graveyard to banish two cards out of our graveyard so he gets rid of darkness and uh, cyber dark dragon and cyber and dragon so all my hard work gone but this deck's kind of good <laughs> so we get our extra normal summon we attach a monster with horn i actually didn't count how many monsters i had in the graveyard but i see i actually wasn't i actually didn't know that i could activate power on I was actually, when I first looked, I was actually going to go for Summer Dark Dragon and go from there. But, once I saw the few, the, the targets I could fuse and summon, I was like, oh, okay, so I guess we win. <laughs> I could have went into Rampage Dragon, that would have also helped too, but I love that Cyber Darkness Dragon is also in the gate. He basically becomes another version of Dragoon now with the setup that we have, can't be targeted, or destroyed by card effects, and is now an army to gate by detaching material. And now we jump him up to 9,000 attack points between the power bond giving him an extra 2k and the five headed dragon. So we swing, we deal 78, and that's the end of game three. Let me know what you guys think of the deck in the comments. Like I said, I, I had a surprising amount of fun with it. It took me a little, a little bit of tweaking. I, I think that's like the third version of the deck that I finally sat on. It's pretty good. And honestly, with some hand traps, with a decent extra uh, extra deck, it might actually be able to do a little something, something. But again, let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you like enjoyed the video, please drop a like. If you guys have other ideas, other tactics I should try out, let me know in the comments. I would love to iterate on this deck. It's super fun and I can't wait for the structure deck to come out. 
If you guys want to check me out on social media, those links will also be down below. But that's it for me. And I'll see you guys tomorrow in another video. Later. I have a dream. That's all I need. I'll make it happen with some work and belief. Know what I want. So I'll take it on. I'll make mistakes, but mistakes make you strong. Let's break it down for a minute. I want the crown, I'm gon' get it. You hear me loud, man, I'm winning. Yeah, Charlie Sheen will be grinning.